The historical region of Greece is often held as the center of Western culture and philosophy. During its golden age, the Grecians created monuments, sciences, art, and literature that have become the foundation of some of the world's most powerful civilizations. Many of these advances were attributed to divine inspiration. Knowledge brought to mortals by the gods themselves. Greek myth and legend portrayed these powerful beings as directly interacting and influencing the events of mortal men in their daily lives. Epics were written, describing the mighty powers and fierce weapons these beings wielded. Gods who could move through the air silently or in glowing radiance, striking the ground with fire and lightning at will. Could these descriptions better fit what we would recognize today as a UFO encounter? Could these gods have revisited a Greek village in September of 1990 in full view of multiple witnesses? Could the ancient writings of Plato and Homer not have been metaphors, but actual accounts of extraterrestrial contact? Join the theorists as they climb the slopes of Mount Olympus and go the distance in the Megas Plantinos UFO Encounter. Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing, Case File 136, Megas Platanos. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Are you flossing your teeth? Are you you kidding me right now? (laughs) Hey, listen, I thought I'd get it out before it started. My bad. (laughs) Holding a fucking floss. In case anyone looks like you I got it. Um, You're a flossy. You want a brush too? Like, hey, listen, listen. This is our second time recording this fucking one, right? You throw some <laughs> scope in there, or what? Yeah, you got. You got where's your? Where's your? Uh, where's your scope? Where's uh? Where's your electric toothbrush? What do you got? Got your water pick out too? Wash my mouth down with some fucking uh, coors. Dude, you have your background blur on, so we can't see what kind of beer that is. It looks like you're drinking a tub of peanut butter. <laughs> no, it's my fucking. It's my lion's koozie. That's what it is. See. Oh yeah, there he is. Uh, anyways, ha- does ha- it lose the? Do you lose the beers in it often? Mm. <laughs> that was uh, mm. you could do better. I could. I I wasn't prepared. Mm. <laughs> Happy four twenty, everybody. To my notes. <laughs> all, all my fellow herbalists out there, if you want, if you want to take part in Zell's uh, weed smoking game through this podcast, you will, if you're watching a live stream, I'm you're gonna see me get up, and that's your cue to also get up and smoke a huge bong rip. <laughs> Just wait. Every Good game, yeah, well thought out. <laughs> Every single time uh, Zell leaves, where we can play a new practical joke on him when he comes back. <laughs> and and the, the more we go, the more I just won't care, and I'll just pretend that, like nothing's happening. I'll no, just say, the I'll more it'll work because you'll forget the last time we already pranked you. I listened back to that prank. It was a great prank. Oh, it was unreal. Yeah. Man. I got back, and my reaction was just like, "Are you for real?" You can't hear me for like five minutes. I'm like, un- if you you can't see what I'm doing in that, but I'm unplugging like all the cords. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? Did, did I push something? I know what. Is there a secret button on this thing? Good talking, Zell. <laughs> did anyone call you later last night? I turned the off the number. app. Oh, did you? Oh, oh boo, <laughs> boo. Yeah, I thought for any, sure it was. Any so voicemails good. though? For anyone listening that wasn't on, listen to our Patreon only live stream last night. Uh, we now officially have a phone number that works. Uh, you can call a number, leave us a voicemail. We are going to uh, get up and running here sooner than later. Uh, some call-in shows. Where we'll pick a topic, take calls. Uh, have a little group chat. It'll be, it'll be lots of fun. Uh, if, if you want that kind of information when those are happening, get on our Patreon. I'll post the, I'll get the phone number going here soon. I don't have it right now. It's not quite officially, right now it's just set up to my, my personal mobile and I'm the only person who can hear it. So we're going to get it into the board through Skype. And so everyone can have a little listen. All right. Megas Platanos. 
Round Is that two. how I even say it? Platanos? I think so. Pretty close. Pretty close? What is Pretty it? Pretty close. Do you have a Greek I'm sure. App? I, 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 I have no idea. It's mega, Megas Platanos, maybe? Megas Platanos. Yeah, I read Greek names. I I don't know. I like take a look at Greek names and I say how I think it sounds. And then I hear somebody else say it and they're like, oh, yeah, you're wrong. I was how way do you wrong. Pronounce, how do you pronounce Achilles? Achilles. <laughs> Achilles. Yeah, just like same Achilles. thing. How do you, Hercules. Same thing. Hercules. Uh, Megas Platanos. <laughs> so we're talking Where about Megas Platanos <laughs> UFO crash. This is a, this is the event that took place uh, in 1990 uh, in the Greek town of Megas Platanos, which is a bit south of Mount uh, Olympus, and about that. It's about central. It's in central Greece, and uh, this happened in the second of September, and. What exactly happened was that there were multiple accounts of people uh, witnessing uh, what they described as large, brightly lit crafts. And not just one, not just two, but like half a dozen of these things, uh, which uh, appeared to move silently through the skies of uh, Mega Platanos. Now, usually these wouldn't be so... You know, a sighting of lights and orbs and things like that doesn't go so far. But again, this is a this is classified as a crash. Uh, accounts from this event uh, have people observing what seemed to be one of the lights uh, exhibiting a kind of erratic movement. And it kind of just fell from the sky and seemed to crash into the ground. Uh, one of the witnesses was named. <laughs> Here we go, Dan. Here you got it. Trantos Caratanjos. Caratranos? Dude, is Caratran Caratranjos? What's a Greek what's a Greek accent? What how does what's one how does one do a Greek accent? Trantos. You gotta do your Michael Trantos Scott. Caratanos. Andrew, you got a Greek accent? <laughs> no, I just stole it from Michael Scott when he was this is Mykonos it. characters. And the Mykonos. <laughs> <laughs> I, cantos, I, cantantos, uh, something like that. Is he? Uh, he's probably a descendant of Zeus, right? We can assume that. I think more like sure. that. Well, you, you know, know, everyone is a little bit. I wouldn't doubt it. Caratrano, Joe's. Yeah, Zeus got around. So, uh, Mr. Trantos was a shepherd who had been working around in that area, and he uh, told investigators who went to, uh, you know, look at this crash or where it happened. It happened. 500 meters from where he stood. He said that he observed flames and fires spreading from the vegetation that was around the, the crash area. I'll stop now, you right there for a second. I'm going to stop you right there because um, I want to dig deep into this for a second. I know looking at me and with all my knowledge <laughs> that I'm well known for, like outside of like, like the shepherd, I'm like, I, he does something with sheep, Right. Is that what a shepherd does? He yes. Uh, he a shepherd herds sheep. Like with the they've got like the cane, right? That rounded cane. Yeah, they like grab I mean, the sheep. They like pretty much break sheep neck when like trying to round them up. They like grabbing that fucking cane and pull them in. That's why I always yeah, thought. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. That's kind of what I thought. But like my main question is, is in every article I read, it said old uh Trantos Curran Cur- 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 <laughs> <laughs> it said he uh, he was working in the area at three in the morning. Well, maybe yeah. he's, so maybe what he's kind guarding. of hours do shepherds work, dude? Maybe he's Weird guarding hours. against wolf. Like maybe there's fucking wolves in Greece, and he's guarding against the wolves, trying to fucking take a stock that early in the morning, dude. If you have to take stock of your sheep at three in the morning, listen, that's the worst listen, job. Listen, everybody fucking knows sheep don't sleep. Because how else are you going to fucking count them when you try to sleep? <laughs> ah, that, you know what? That's there very true. They're just heading to everyone's dreams. That's why you got to keep them in the fields. That's the busiest time for them. Maybe. At three in the morning? Yeah. Clearing fences. Maybe he gets up at three. Maybe he just got up. Maybe he, go, he goes to sleep early. Got up real early to go check on his uh, on the sheet. That's a really good question as to why. 
That's a good question. I'm not sure what kind of hours shepherds keep. I'm sure it's quite long. I know some of them will probably end up sleeping out there. I mean, if you don't have a probably sleep with a shepherd sheep. dog or something. Yeah, I suppose. I, I mean, hey, it's a lot of outdoor time. It's, maybe there's maybe he had nice. a shepherd dog that <laughs> died, and now he has to take duty over that dog. So now he's protecting from the wolf. He's out there. He's out there with his cane. I'm like my 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 belief in this story hinges on old Trantos. Whether I find him believable. <laughs> so one of the things that I find, I'm like, like instantly this will be more reliable to me if someone's like, oh, hell yeah, man. Shepherding, you're working 19 hour days. You're up at two. You're, you know what I mean? You're not pulling it. Those sheep, all they want to do is run away from you. You got to keep herding them in. It's crazy. I'll be like, okay, well then that makes sense. But for me, I was like, it's dark. Like, do they like, are they build a fence? Like what is going on with sheeping? Why is it so hard? There's got to be a better way. Especially in, if you're especially working in 1990. In yeah, it's not like your ancient times. Yeah. <laughs> this is an ancient Greece we're talking about. Maybe this is a goddamn hard worker. Gets up early, goes to bed late, always tending sheep. Uh, I Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, shepherding is kind of a big thing in Greece. And also places like New Zealand and Australia, but... Um, it's not so much, I don't think, the wolves they have to worry about, but it's saying here about, like, feral dogs are a big problem. Fuck, almost the same thing. Speaking so. of speaking of uh, sheep herders in New Zealand and Australia, when I was in Aus- Australia, I watched a competition. No joke. It was like a pro competition of how fast you can shave a, sh- a sheep. Right. Those, those are sheep shearing contests? That's yeah. crazy. I could not believe that was a real thing. These guys are just shaving a sheep in like 20 seconds, the whole thing. Do they with, do with that the electric three in the razors? morning? Because I think they have ones where they do it with the, the shears too, like the, the mechanical ones, the, well, the scissors. Maybe. I The one I seen was a, like a giant electric razor and there's like... Right. Rah, rah, yeah. But I think they have they have the, also the ones where they do it with the traditional like... So you're on vacation in Australia <laughs> and that's what you... <laughs> chose to spend your time dude we got a lot of australian listeners i'm telling you this was a like a big event people are getting hammered at this place it was like going to like watch darts or something like people just got hammered and watch watch the nrl game you know what i mean i watched them all dude i watched i watched everything i could but and sheep shaving was just part of the docket along with afl the national rugby league and sheep shaving you know what though listen i would say this I would the sheep shaven. I would, you go. I would equal that, like equate that to like coming to Canada and being like one of the days you go and spend at the rodeo and watch like all the like where they tie up the little calves and stuff and tackle them. And you're like, it's no. funny watching people get wrecked for like an afternoon. You get drunk. No, but that's like, worldwide. Right. Rodeo is worldwide. Sheep shaving is only in like select parts of the world. Yeah, sh- yeah. Anyways, Just, if anyways. You- what did this? What did this sheep shaver see? <laughs> His hardworking <laughs> sheep shaven shepherd. So, uh, Mister Trantos uh, said that he does again. He described a uh, area of burnt area, like um, flames coming out from what it seemed to be something had crashed on the ground. So this was early in the morning, about three a.m. And as the morning, you know, waned on. Uh, it seemed that the, the the remaining five crafts that were hovering in the area seemed to be uh, like two at a time would drop down and seem to hover close to what was seen as the crash site. Uh, you know, as daylight came, they had uh, another small group of local residents who all ended up venturing out to the spot and they said that they saw the same thing. It was a small, dark, burned oval shape uh, in the ground. Uh, so after the lights departed, uh, people said they this thing is like the burned area seemed very acute, like it had been cut with a knife is what they said. So it was very it was a very defined oval area. And so all the people decided it would be a good idea. So many of the people who, who discovered the crash site took a bunch of, apparently they took a bunch of tiny pieces. <laughs> I heard they took like Dude, what looked like wire and like burnt like remains of whatever was there. Right. You, they took them as yeah, souvenirs. <laughs> 100%. We, every single one of us here 
would have done exactly the same thing. Yep. Hundred percent. I would have just started running. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Andrew. Andrew wouldn't have made it to the <laughs> ground itself, but. No, I would have kept. I would have kept the piece for sure. It's wild to me that they have, like everyone described it as like they're like if you from what we saw, it looked like it was a, like a recovery mission. These things were like came down and recovered whatever crashed. Right. So even yeah, after this event, uh, you know, a short while after. Uh, the Hellenic, the Greek Air Force actually came to investigate uh, themselves. And they said the the residents of the area said that the whatever was left there, they took. Now, is it, do we have any pictures or anything like that of anything that was left? Do we have any evidence? Oh, anything? dude, everyone knows photos in the 90s aren't reliable. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, but those people <laughs> would still probably have those. What do you think? All these people have cameras on shepherd salaries? Like, dude, it's three in the, in the morning. One. As far as I know, no one has ever come forward with any of the wreckage. No, and mm. there's no photos of this particular incident. Well, they've also they're also saying that people lost it, and I'm like, how do you lose something like that? Oh no, dude! If I had something like that, it'd be right here on my wall every day, yeah, every single time. Nice I'd be like, like shadow box, like a little like yeah, hundred like yeah. percent. And I turn to it every day, and I'd be like, hey guys, 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 see this, see this here. Yeah, but maybe they had a some, piece of a uh, spacecraft. Government you remember the shit? <laughs> knock yeah. on their doors and fucking buy it off them. Give them some hush money. It is true. They are shepherds. Are, are they prone to taking uh, buyouts? All right. First, uh, <laughs> save the farm. If you're, if you're playing, right? this could be a movie. If you're playing the game, this is the first rip. Keep going, though. I'll be right back. <laughs> this <laughs> Why does he have to go? I'm <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't like smoke it in there, I guess. Is he goes like outside? right outside. Oh, he has to go outside. He's the one that's smoking the, the studio. Now I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> talking about getting bri- uh, giving bribes to Oh, yeah, to our shepherds. shepherds it, this could be a movie. This could be a movie, right? He finds the piece of metal. The farm's in disrepair, right? He's like, the bank, you know, he owes money on the bank. And the government comes in and he's like, this is the end of the movie where he finds the alien metal and he sells it to the government to save the farm. Oh, you know, you know save what he's the doing sheep. is... He's using that, he's forged that alien metal into fucking sheep shears. And that's how he wins <laughs> all the contests. <laughs> that's why That's why the Greek are world renowned for their sheep shaving. Well, doesn't everybody know that? <laughs> Ask any one of these Australians. That's You know what? I wouldn't even be surprised if what we're saying is exa- 100% fact. That the best, and this is this is the most logical thing I've ever heard. They made them into sheep shears. To shave the sheep, to win all the contests, to save the farm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing I find pretty funny is that the official statement from the Greek Air Force was that uh, they said that what the people had witnessed was a Soviet satellite or a small plane. That's a quite the v- variation. Right, Dude, and <laughs> like, there's a huge, there's a huge gap between those two things, and there's a huge gap between like, even what they describe, like to me as a person, I'm like, satellites don't do that, and small planes don't do what they've described. So to be like, yeah, it was a satellite or a small plane, it's ludicrous to what these people have said they've seen. <laughs> like, why not be like, oh, um, it was hel- like helicopters would be close and be like, we didn't hear them, and they're like, they're new ones. And then just walk away, right? You would be like, "All right, okay, well, maybe, yeah, helicopters can cu- can hover, but uh, like they describe they lights burn holes floating in the ground, like yeah, they they describe the one crashing, these other ones just high, hovering silently, the other ones coming down and appear to be retrieving the wreckage of the down one and then leaving silently. I'm like, what small plane? How is that a small plane? And that's all, all that's one small plane. No, it's a Russian satellite. So the people, do, they the do people claim that the craft, when they got there, there was no actual craft. There was just debris, right? So when yeah. the, when the Greek air force came, they just would have found the same stuff, just the burn, the like same burn debris, in the whatever was left after those, after those, uh, what you miss is we determined that the shepherds came, took the metal, and the reason they lost the metal is because they forged it into shears so they could go around and win all the sheep shaving competitions around the globe. <laughs> That's gold. <laughs> That's great. super lightweight space age sheep shears. Just some super alloy. And yeah. nev- never gets dull. Yeah. 
and they did it to save the farm. Right? I like this that's theory. The end of, that's in the movie. We should, man, once we're, once we're big and we can have ATD productions, this will be our feel good movie. <laughs> right? The sh- <laughs> sheep shaving she- we'll call shepherd. It, we'll call it little lamb cuts. <laughs> huh? Write the script. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. I think we, we could <laughs> probably crowd, crowd fund like 500 bucks to put that together. I just don't know how we can squeeze. I don't know Harry how much we're gonna get that sheep. How it. much does sheep cost? Dan is definitely playing Trentos. Trentos. <laughs> yeah. Cantaros. Dan Cater uh, Trantos. Stelio Cantos. Does anybody does that name ring a bell with anybody? Yep. Is that what you're singing? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. knew it. That's <laughs> why it was driving me nuts. That's fucking funny. That what is it? I don't recognize it. We gotta explain it in after hours. You have to Okay, explain it in after hours. I don't I have no idea what that is. It's fucking gold. But I mean that's pretty much what you get from Megas Platinos. Now I mean we kinda pick we kinda picked this one because um you know Greek UFOs, like Greece is not any stranger to kind of what you would Oh hell you no. could say is like extraterrestrial <laughs> activity. Because like even in the early 2000s, there was another case where people had sighted uh, UFOs uh, near the town of Cantorini. And this one was reported by a family and they witnessed not only uh, sphere shaped crafts that were uh, hovering and moving over the skies of their small village. But what they also described was that they had they had also seen some sort of entity some sort of creature that had entered their house on several occasions. Ugh. What? Right. Dude, and like they said Kelly they, Hod- these sightings occurred at night and it was some sort of, they, they described it as, a, you know, a strange looking creature about three feet tall and what looked to be reptilian brown skin and white hair. I'm not sure if the white hair is like on the head. I'm picturing like a mohawk. That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> so kind of like Spike. Spike. Yeah. Perfect 80s you know? mohawk. Dude, that, uh, that sounds just like that. Uh, what's the. And he's wearing tiny slit sunglasses. <laughs> and they said he was wearing something. So he was wearing clothes. And they said it's something akin to a robe or gown. I don't know why they didn't Can just we... say toga. Because that's what you would wear if you were a Greek reptilian He's yeah. also wearing fingerless leather gloves in my head. And you've in described fucking Spike from Gremlins. Maybe. No, that's him. Google T. Spike from Gremlins. It looks exactly like him. I know what Spike from Gremlins looks like. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, or, you know, Spike. Okay, Spike from Gremlins wearing a toga. That is what you get. That is what I'm picturing And that's not like, now. like that description of a reptilian is like not far off of other 80s <laughs> descriptions of reptilians of them looking like <laughs> they're straight out of 80s pop culture. <laughs> that's pretty commonly seen. But anyway, re- reptilians, it, they're not, they're described very similar. But if that thing, I was always thinking like in my head, my first initial thought is like, oh, dude, if that thing was in my house, I'd fuck it up. But I'm like, I get scared of a spider. Like, I would not fuck anything up. That's like, that's a T, what we just described. Yeah, if you get up in the middle of the night to, like, get a drink of water, and you, like, turn around the corner, and it's just some fucking, like, gremlin in a toga. Like, that's your, you You just said water, buddy. That's the first mistake. Keep that shit away from them. <laughs> you right? you gotta, it, uh. Everybody knows you keep water away from the mugwise. Yeah, well, I would end up like if you just turned the corner and you just saw it, like I'd end up throwing it on and just make things worse. But it'd be like, just <laughs> like fuck. While they're bubbling for a little bit, like and like with the water, do you think you could you could like just quickly just stomp on them? Yeah, <laughs> just run, just like, like, stomp like just, just, yeah. just <laughs> like soccer kick them into the closet. It just yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> soccer kick them. Okay, this you reminds I mean? me of this. Take a look at this. I'm not going to tell you what it's from. Just have a little. Just have a little peek. We talked about this encounter before. The same type of creature. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. Oh, that's the uh, fuck. What's that one? Dan, does Dan uh, know something? Something gremlin. Uh, it's exactly like Spike. So we go the Mohawk. Shit, I forgot what they call. We talked Mohawk about him too. Yeah, we talked about it's we? that Kelly Hopkinsville encounter where they fucking yeah, climb on oh, the roof yeah, and shit. Yeah, they're tapping right. on the glass gremlin and shit. And yeah. Sounds like yeah. the same type of creature. 
Those weird little fucks. Is that the one the, when they're on the roof and stuff like that? Yeah. Like terrorizing that family? Yeah, they're like that tapping was a on terrifying the, story. Yeah, they're tapping on the tin roof and shit, and the guys are like shooting the guns like out the window at the creatures and shit. Dude, honestly, that's one of the scariest in the encounters we've talked about. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're hopping around on the front lawn. Like, ta- I think they're tapping sticks or something they have. It's, See, ugh. what they didn't tell you about that story, though, is that that family actually went to a Chinese market earlier that day and purchased <laughs> a few mugwise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what you're loose. saying is mugwise are just alien creatures that are only sold in where were where'd they get it? I got from like some old Asian market or something like that, if I remember correctly. So what you're saying is mugwise have caused coronavirus, is what you're saying, basically. Right, well, don't eat them. I don't know why <laughs> people are trying to fucking eat them. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff people shouldn't be eating that people are eating, so careful. You never know what the consequences could be. Those, but that'd be terrifying. I think in my head, my first initial thoughts like, "Oh, I'd fuck that thing up." But like, fuck I get no. to, dude. I remember like being in Thailand and stuff, and like seeing a gecko in my house and being like, ah, like just <laughs> completely freezing. Buddy, I had to catch a mouse in my house the other day, and like I couldn't help. I don't understand. I'm not scared of mice. They're not scary at all. Every time I go to try and scoop it up with a dustpan. And it would like move. I would jump right on my fucking shoe. Like I'd be like, Bruh! like <laughs> why? I could fucking smoosh this fucking thing. But yet I'm shit my pants every time it moves. Oh, dude, seeing that fucking creature, I would. I can't even imagine the heart jump that you would get. Like yeah. fucking, out, and it just like being at the end of the hallway and just like having that like, just that long stare down with each other for a second. Like fuck that, man. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> run. But so this this type of creature, the first thing when they kind of described it, um, you know, Greece is no stranger to monsters from myth and legend. So it's it's not. I mean, if they did see something. You know, could it have possibly been something that was already there or something like that? There, there are rumors and they were saying at the time of these sightings, like there were kind of rumors that went around. And I think they're still around today that there was there's always been this kind of idea that there is an underground alien base underneath Mount Olympus. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're getting yes. to the meat. Talk about this. Yeah. So people have put Fucking forth Hall the theory. Olympus. Hall Olympus. Come on now. <laughs> we're about to drop some truth bombs on you. Here they come. So people have put forth a theory and it's not, it's not completely crazy. But that Greek gods and monsters, which were part of myth and legend of, you know, Greek history, were perhaps, you know, just extraterrestrials. Uh, Oh, yeah. That's one of the greatest theories out there. That's straight ancient aliens. You have the one at like it's it's not just well, and it's not just myth and legend. Uh, There's actually like a historical account. Um where a Roman general Silas, uh, when he was on a campaign in Albania on his march to Greece, they said that his army actually captured a satyr. It was written like in a historical account, not not like a legend, not not it wasn't part of like, you know, the Odyssey or the Iliad or things like that. Like this was an actual historical account. And then they said that they they caught this thing and they they identified it as a satyr, which is a half man, half goat uh, oh, creature. Phil, <laughs> Phil <Optimus>. Dan, <laughs> uh, and they said that they couldn't speak or that it it, it made sounds that sounded but, like Danny DeVito, <laughs> right? <laughs> Either find some whores, like, <laughs> uh, can I offer you an egg in this trying time? <laughs> it's a rum ham, uh. But they they described it as making sounds like a goat or a horse, but it didn't. It couldn't speak English, and it didn't seem to to understand them <laughs> talking to it. So I mean, speak Greek. That's great. So hold on. Was the satyr in this satyr? Here I gotta. So I gotta. Here we go. Make sure this for a second. Was this satyr? So it's it could only make noises of a goat, like that weird ass like when goats yell. <laughs> oh my god. So here's my question. Here's my question. Was the top half the goat? And the bottom half, the man. In that scenario, like is that still technically a satyr? (laughs) 
That's not. That's all they do. Yeah. If I heard that in the middle of the night, I. Oh, yeah, I'd fucking dude. demons. That's, that's, that's fucking scary. demons right there. Are fucking creepy enough, man. If I hear, if I hear the crack of the wood, a crack of a stick in the middle of the night, dude, I'm done. I'm like, oh god, please, Jesus, save <laughs> me from these woods. Get me home. <laughs> and I shall worship you, lo- oh Lord. And then I get home and I'm like, whew, I made it. Thank you, me, for getting me out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so these, he, I mean, you have tons of creatures that, you know, are described in Greek legend, which are, uh, you know, people uh, like you have people described as almost like analogs to, to extraterrestrials today that they describe. And, you know, having satyrs half man half human or any of the half human half you know animal creatures from greek legend are just not maybe they were based on some sort of truth all the gods were in my opinion well that's what's cool too because like if you read like any of jack kirby's uh internals that's basically his storyline too right he was using basically the basis for the the characters were like the greek gods and they were all aliens yeah, there's there's some uh, there some people base their theory on the idea that uh, some of the inventions or some of the technology that Greeks were rumored to possess or uh, you know were actually you know in historical accounts possessed themselves were in fact given to them the 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 idea. Or the actual technology itself was, you know, the, as they claim it came from the gods, you know, and that's just a way of saying it came from extraterrestrials, that they gave them the the technology or the inspiration to, to build uh, machines. Because the, the Greeks were, in, in some areas, they were fantastically advanced uh, in the ideas of math, uh, philosophy, things like that. Um, well, I was just going to say, like, why are we so fast to like pull away from human you know ingenuity and be like wow no that's way too advanced for them they couldn't have created that where we got fuckers now inventing iphones and all this other crazy shit you know what i mean yeah. like it's like yeah but you know now- who gave us those the gods andrew that's when they crashed in roswell that's where we got the technology get- we're still doing the same thing we did back in greece yeah they're all re- from aliens reverse how does the tv work shit. tell me right now you don't know. No one knows how it works. Hey, listen, you're talking to the wrong guy because I think it was until I was about nine years old, I was I wouldn't change in front of the TV because they thought I thought they could see me. So. <laughs> <You're> just- <laughs> 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 Nothing's changed, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, <laughs> it's I forgot what we're talking about, dude. Talking about fucking gods. Uh, so we're talking about. So if you go with uh, <laughs> if you go with ancient aliens route. The gods of like the stories of Mount Olympus and what was the what was the like the the father of all the gods like Kronos Kronos. Or something? He ate all his children except for Zeus and Zeus flew into Kronos and freed all his children and you're like well that doesn't make any sense but then if you go if you're like if you say you were like an like a a person back there who had no real knowledge of like anything like no no flying obviously no flying craft or anything and then you look up and there's like an say an alien mothership. This is this is the real theory here. There's that not it wasn't Kronos was an alien mothership, and then all the Greek gods were like other ships that were going into them, and then the other was like a sky battle or something, and they defeated Kronos, and then they wrote they wrote down the mythology. That's the that's the ancient aliens version, and then the other version is that the Greeks just followed the constellations and then gave names and like anamorphized. Is that the right term? And an, anthropomorphized. Anthropomorphized. See, I, to me, I'm like, to have such, when you look at some of the Greek technology, like I will talk about it in a bit, but like the anti uh mechanism and stuff, to me, I'm like, when I look at those things, like, yeah, they're impressive, but I look and I go like, those are very like human in the realms of what humans can do. So I'm always like, I think more, I like to think of like, why couldn't it be like time traveling humans right or humans from the future or something that were back then and they have this technology so that's why they're depicted as people right but like you know with say zeus's thunderbolts say it's like a you know if you never saw a a gun 
before, right? And how would you describe it? You're like, if you had no context, I could see you being like, oh man, like he, he shot thunder out of his hands. It was crazy. Well, it, it is just, yeah, very, it is the very same thing, right? Because like uh, when you shoot a bullet, like supersonic speeds creates that that crack, like that thunder crack, especially, yeah. especially on like a large caliber bullet. Like a really big, like 300 Magnum, like it and cracks listen, the air and so you, hard. You shoot someone with a bullet and they die. It's not like people are like, here's the bullet that killed him. Right? Like yeah. they're, not, they're not doing out of the, They'd be like, holy shit, there's a hole in him. He, he just got struck by lightning. Well, and when you like, when you listen to all these stories about the gods, they're, they, they're all very human. You know what I mean? They all have these humor, human traits. Like when you, le- when you read about Zeus, the most important thing you take away from that guy is Zeus fucks. <laughs> a lot. Oh, that Holy guy fucks. Smokes. Nobody yeah. fucks more than Zeus. And here's the, if Zeus was an alien, there'd be way more hybrid people walking around. You know what I mean? Like, totally. dude, he was swinging dick everywhere. Zeus fucks. That guy fucks. Zeus, he yes. fucks. How, how many, I don't know. I don't know my Greek mythology that well, but how many like half gods are accredited he to, create? to Zeus? Yeah. 463. Oh, like half gods are actually legitimate children. Well, legitimate children as well. I guess. Ill- I guess illegitimate both. children. Illegitimate children. Yeah, like he, that he, guy loved thunderbolts and fucking. That's the two. That's what he was about. Sometimes he'd do the weather and shit, but like only when he wasn't doing the other two. Yeah. <laughs> it called thunderlips. But okay, so I'm gonna say like even like I'm thinking I'm thinking in my head like going with like maybe the, like the analogy for th- it's shooting. Uh, the thunder is like shooting a bullet or something, right? And if you shot someone, like a smaller caliber, say they did do autopsies and they're like, oh, look at the wound and they wound and they, it wouldn't go straight through because many times a bullet will go through, like bounce around. And if it comes out, it'll pop out somewhere else. Right. And they'd be like, oh, the only thing could do that. Well, and if he's like, shooting at 22, it's not going to be that loud of a crack. And no, the one that's not going to have an exit wound is going to be a 22. That's ricocheting through. No, clock. no, no. But like in, I don't know, 45, 9 mil? I mean, but like, are we talking autopsies here? Because we're talking in a time where people are getting fucking leached and sacrificed. So yeah, I that's think true. that's, there's no fucking CSI Greece fucking. Wasn't, no. wasn't like Greece like the dawn of medicine? Oh, I'm sure it was, but not when they're fucking worshiping the gods. Like, li- listen to this. I'm here, I'm saying. Like, say if fucking some strong man some like what's that guy's name Thor Bjorgensen or whatever that giant fucking mountain or whatever <laughs> if he was on some sort of crew in some 80s movie that got time traveled back to space they would think that motherfucker is Hercules yeah <laughs> you know what i mean they would be like oh my god like the shit he's lifting like they don't know how to work out their muscles to like maximize so i'm saying like even one of us would impress buddy those yeah. guys did everything with their hands back in the day. When you look at any of those fucking sculptor, sculptures, they're yeah. jacked. I'm just saying they're not lifted. I'm saying someone who trains to lift is going to dust people. Like there, there'll be a couple <laughs> like strong guys where they're like just naturally strong, but like you know what I mean. Like you send back like a like a power lifter. I don't know, man. I bet you people I, I bet are stronger you, the, back then. I'm not talking like you or me, Andrew. I'm talking like someone who's fucking strong. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure that there's <laughs> really like really strong. I'm pretty sure there's Greek sailing records like that they have been found like of rower like rowing records, and then today's modern rowers are like that's untouchable. That's a record that is not even humanly possible. Buddy, these guys are walking everywhere they need to go. They're carrying everything they need to fucking bring with. Like there's they're doing everything with their hands. Like they're these guys. That's what I mean. But if you like go with like mo- like a linear progression of humanity. Like there's like, oh, we were super, we weren't very advanced till 12,000 years ago and we discovered farming then slowly society and better building methods and it got progressively better and better and better. Then you get to some of these ancient structures that are so much more advanced than we can currently make. And you're like, well, maybe, like maybe all those stories, like we've put a good picture together, but I don't think that a lot of the stuff that we think about ancient Greece and stuff is probably true. Now let's talk about the mechanism. So we talked, we briefly mentioned it. It was, oh fuck, Antikythera mechanism. Is that how yeah. you pronounce it? Anyways, like, like, what was it? How long ago? It was not that long ago. They were diving 150 feet under the sea in the Aegean Sea, just off the coast of Greece and found an ancient shipwreck. And inside they found this mechanism. And I don't know how they deduced, but they've deduced that this is an astronomical calendar. 
could predict eclipses what? and like yeah, it could predict eclipses and movement of planets. And I thought this was an ancient fighter jet. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> there, okay, no. that that is that's fucking. You r- ruined the joke. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> my bad. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is a great. That is a fucking great uh, clip, though, and because we we all watched a clip of Ancient Aliens where they talk about this mechanism, and who is it that makes that comparison? David Childress. Yeah, he says the finding of this, these gears, and this Antikythera mechanism, is the equivalent of finding a jet airplane in King Tut's tomb. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, that's a stretch. Just. Leaps and bounds away. Yeah, you like impressive. I mean, this like, mechanism is impressive. Here's the mechanism. If you're watching the live stream, you can you can follow along. But it's like a, it's essentially just a gear. It looks like a gear. A, it's like in three pieces in the museum. It's in three different pieces now. But what they've deduced that that it's actually like a set of gears that can like accurately predict astronomical movements. So right. they didn't think that like machining was like technically actually as far as like our linear this progression is of humanity. This hundred years before yeah. they knew they could do this. They said like, yeah, but well, <laughs> what if that, what if that was something that came to earth, you know what I mean? From space, from, from gear world during the gear wars. <laughs> like, has anybody thought about that? <laughs> like that could be a relic from Revolio clocks. Listen, Jr. This this story can go that way. Like we could make a key, we could make a serious case for the gear wars being real, and some gear faces came to Earth and set up shop. I, fighter jets. Are you saying Zeus is a gearhead? Well, dude, they they talk about the island of Rhodes, and is it, what book in what book in there? Let's say the statues, the the statues would come alive and move like a human or something like that in one of the books. I can't remember which one. It's been a while since I watched that Ancient Aliens. Watched a clip today. But I was like, you know what? It, the, and then they fucking, what's that guy's name? David Wilcox? David Wilcox, he goes, yeah. He goes, he's fantastic. I love, just fantastic. He goes, well, listen, if they knew about these gears... It's not that far away to say that they knew robotics. And I think he's actually said advanced robotics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know what I mean? Like anybody who's been around statues and shit like that, like, you know what I mean? You go to museums or whatever. Don't you ever get that eerie feeling that they're like watching you and kind of like moving? Dude, some of those okay, ancient I, statues I, are so precise. They're, they're spectacular, but they're not living and for and, and moving. So for to me, like this is where my brain goes when I hear that, and uh, like someone says that live that like living and moving. I imagine like you know when you're watching all those weird, uh, fucking, old movies where they like they paint the human statues and they just stand there, and then they'll like change position every now and then, but it's like it's just people painted who just stay really still. Do you mean like the guys who panhandle? What? What? <laughs> like the guys that are fucking pretending to be statues that are panhandling. Yeah, human <laughs> robot statues. Not those crusty jugglers. <laughs> I'm talking like in the old movies. But yeah, same guys. They living the living statue. There's a. Have you never seen like a movie like the mummy? <laughs> have you or never this? seen a movie, Andrew? Have you ever seen a movie? There's like green. No, I don't Greek watch lunch. them because I feel like they're watching me back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but. This this machine is like it is cool that they find it. Like I think Ancient Aliens overhypes it a little bit. Of course, but that's half the fun. I because want, my like, thing is, I'm like, if they if this is from like if you're saying like, oh, they, this is crazy technology that they got from aliens. I'm like, that technology doesn't seem that useful if people are traversing the fucking stars to get here. And I'm like, they traverse the stars and then they get out and they're just like. Yeah, let me see here. Let me crank this thing here. Like, oh no, back it up, back it up, back it up. Oh, well, there we go. Maybe they, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe like they didn't, they didn't use it, but they instilled, oh. they instilled knowledge of the no, I got the it, cosmos. dude. I, I, I cracked it in my in my four twenty haze. Nice, it came to me. All right, let's hear it. Right, what's that advanced Lego? Connects tech 
Technic. Tenex. Or Tenex. Right? Technic? No. This is just some Technic. kid's Kinex toy from an alien race. <laughs> and they just, they're just they just like, put it together like, oh, look at this thing. It tells the stars. Ha <laughs> ha. Like he just, some kid put it together on the spaceship and then gave it to a human and they were like, this is from the gods. <laughs> well, maybe. In my mind though, I feel like people have been, hu- people have been like watching the stars and making like astronomical like buildings for a long time. You can you can consider Stonehenge, like Adam's calendar in like South Africa and like a bunch of other ones. So you could say like that knowledge has been around humanity for a long time, may have been lost in like the dark ages and then rediscovered. But as far as like the machining of advanced like technology like that, they, that was 1500 years earlier. Like that, that that's, look, that's why it seems so crazy. Yeah, but look at a picture of that and then look at a picture of an astrolabe. Yeah, oh, pull up one of those. Well, that well, think that thing's been at the bottom of the ocean for fifteen hundred years, so you can't. Right, but uh, yeah, but I'm saying like that one. They said was like it's. They had evidence that it was inside like a wooden box, and if you should like, they have actual pictures of what they think are like recreations or reconstructions of what they th- think it actually looks like, and it's like it's an ash. It it looks very similar to an astrolabe, which existed about the same time. The first ones that they have are like 200 BC, which was this one. They dated this one to like 200 something BC, I think, as well. Let's pretend because I obviously know what that is, obviously. But let's pretend like the people listening don't know what that is. You want to explain what that is to us, Dan? An astrolabe is is it's a small mechanism, which is a series of like interlocking gears and stuff like that, which basically that if you when you turn it, you set it's like a dial and you can set it to a certain date. And, you know, some astrolabes are more complicated than others. But uh, what they think the Antikythera mechanism was, was just an astrolabe that you could set a date like you could you could move it to a certain date and then it would show you the approximate locations of the planets in the sky. But that thing that Zelda just put up on the screen is the exact same fucking thing. Similar. Very similar. Like, what is, I don't understand. It's just not all crusty from being at the bottom of the fucking But ocean. Is, is astrolabe st- actually from Greeks, Greece? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like in. They've been around. Astrolabes have been around for a long time, like since at least an early, BC, the earliest astrolabe. Yeah, two hundred BC. So these guys yeah. are trying to and fucking sell been, us on space yeah. or on fucking fighter jets, and they've already been making this kind of thing. Like Jesus. Well, they said they were invented by the Hellenistic civilization, which is Greek, and uh, by Apollonius of Perga. So Apollonius, ah, yes, Apollonius. <laughs> So they've been around for a while. Uh, whether the Antikythera mechanism was actually one or, or something like maybe it was just a really fancy one. But they look quite similar. They, That's all I'm saying. 100% is. look similar. It's hard to tell if it's fancy or not because it's all just like corroded and. Yeah, it's not fancy now. It's not fancy now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I, 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 sub- I like this. I subscribe to the Greek gods. If they were anything like that, it was. I don't think it was aliens per se. I think it was like further advanced humans, right? Time um, travelers. I one of my one of my favorite books. I think is is called Ilium, and it puts forth the idea that it was perhaps like really advanced humans that were like they portrayed themselves or they put themselves out as gods, and they basically were they threw the Trojan War like for entertainment. They th- like they when, started it for entertainment. Yeah, it was yeah, just imagine like, it, that though. Imagine in the future, right? We right now we're putting like our entertainment now is like pitting one versus one fighters in a cage. Yeah, right. Like yeah. yes, and then it, yeah. What I'm saying is soon we're gonna be like that's not enough. Throw a couple. All right, let's have them fight a bear. And then like <laughs> soon you're like you know what this is boring. Like I want I want to watch countries fight. I want to watch huge groups of people. Like well, you can't do that nowadays. We're too technological advanced. So you jump in, you go down to Crazy Bob's Sunday time travel <laughs> machine, and you can go and set up a help uh, watch a war back in ancient times. Yeah, it, it's nuts. Like one of uh, one of the best parts of the book is like at the very beginning, and it talks about how um, what like one of the best parts of the Iliad, uh, the story of the Trojan War, is when the the Greek hero Diomedes uh, basically goes berserk. Uh, with the aid of Athena, like Athena gives him like super awesome power, like God of War Kratos level powers. Oh. And he goes out and he just starts murking Trojans. And 
in the book, what they say is like, she didn't actually, it wasn't magic. What she did was she like injected him with a type of like nano machine that Ooh. increased that basically gave off, uh, you know, increased his strength and speed and all that stuff. And then gave off like a, uh, like the, the byproduct of that, instead of creating heat, it created light. So he like glue, he glowed when, uh, when he did it. Super, yeah, Sa- super Saiyan super Saiyan one. Two, three, or yeah. four, Super Saiyan Super. What yeah, the dude wrecks. Uh, he wrecks a shitload of people. He wrecks the guy who's like the second best fighter next to Hector. Um, he wounds Aphrodite and he Hercules. fucking beats Ares. Oh shit! Get out! God of War. Yeah, it's fucking. It's like one of the coolest parts. But uh, yeah, but they talk about like you know how perhaps like nano machines or advanced science could you know account for these these. Uh, you know these stories of heroes and and things like that. If you're, you know, if you're running a you know a, a giant Greek war just for fun and you wanted to make the greatest heroes, give them PEDs. Yeah, and if you can, <laughs> your god. Like they talk about how the gods were always invisible and they could only be seen when they wanted to be seen. So you know, adaptive camouflage, invisibility, cloaking. It's not that far. Dude, I'm off. telling you, it's time travelers, and they had such a good time that they're like, we're not leaving. And then the war with Kronos was that it was the time cops coming back to be like, listen, your time's up. You got to leave. You can't stay here and keep meddling. And they had a big war with the time cops. John Claude. Yeah. And they and they caused too much damage, so they just had to be left. So are you saying that the the war between uh, the time cops and the person that went back was, to start the war was... Yeah, Kronos. The, Kronos and the gods? Who's... It was it fucking... It's It's fucking... Rod was Rodman the other time cop? <laughs> no, no. No, you're thinking that's, of the wrong movie. You're double, double team. Was it double take? That's, yeah, no, it's double take. Fucking Rob Schneider. <laughs> yeah, they fight a tiger in that one. I think, <laughs> dude, dude. It, listen, listen. Hear me out here. Melissa, man. Melissa, Kronos is the god of time. Okay. That's what I'm saying the time cops coming back in time to collect the time travelers. They didn't have any of it. Zeus, meanwhile, is like living up. He's like, listen, boys, like we're staying here. I'm having affair after affair after affair. And he's pumping all his kids full of all he's they're getting all his like weird PED super genes because it's in the future. His nano jizz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's canon. This makes man. perfect sense. That's canon. Nano jizz. Yeah. Yep. Hercules was a was a uh, product of nano jizz. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it slowly runs out, right? That's why it's uh, they filter down in a couple generations. There was no more gods. Nano jizz is who put the glad and gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned it. You heard it here first. But I'm like, th- to be honest, I-, I subscribe to that theory that that we just came up with. I'm like, yes. Well, it, ma- makes, it makes more sense. sense that if you like, if there were actually like, alien gods from a different galaxy or different whatever. And they can come back here and they're having sex and impregnating girls. It doesn't seem biologically feasible, really. But it would make more sense if you came from the future. You're still a human. Yeah. It makes more sense. Because aliens, like, wouldn't give a shit. But it seems like the Greek gods, like, had a good time. Really. They (laughs) partied hard. They were fucking partying. You know. They fucked. I heard that the Greek gods actually started 420. They're the original tokers. Heard that. (laughs) Heard that today, actually, on the forums. (laughs) Did you really? (laughs) Along with a lot of other weird stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Hermes Mon. On that on that sure. note, I'm going for round two if you're following the game. Be right back. <laughs> this fucking guy, man. <laughs> we should all just fucking uh I can't even think of a prank to play on him while he's gone. Oh no, when he comes back nothing. just no, just pretend like we're saying stuff, like just mouth it. We gotta get it we gotta get him again in a fucking few weeks. When his guard's down, he just doesn't see it coming. He's expecting yeah. it now. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That being said, I was expecting to get fucked with on the on the Ouija board, and it's still it fucking got me. <laughs> well, it's like yeah, if we did that, he probably just. What if we all down. don't move? What if we all don't move? And he's gonna know. No, he'll just shut the stream down. This is terrible timing. Yeah, it's terrible. He'll know. <laughs> ah, it's too bad. We we could try. I mean, we could try. That's the only thing we could do. But anyways, what we're talking about, what about the Greek gods? <laughs> no, no, more importantly, what the fuck is that picture behind you? I need to see it. Why is it not up? 
Oh, okay, dude. It's not up. I'll tell you why it's not up. I wanted to put it up right behind me because I love this picture so much. But when I hang it, uh, the light from my... Because, you know, I got to have the good light lighting, frame my face and stuff, get that good shading. It doesn't... It glares off the picture so bad. What is um, the picture, though? Like, what the fuck is it? Oh, I'll hold it up for you. So it's a it's a it's an original uh, wired for sound, um, by I can't remember the artist's name. I had it just a second ago. I think it's Zeg Zeg Brian. What it. flea market did you get it at? Uh, actually, my parents had it up in their house all the time, and I said, "Listen, if you're ever getting rid of that, I want it. It's an original painting uh, poster designed from Sid Brack. It's from 1982. He has a whole collection of them." I found that out just earlier with Dan. My new goal is to collect the entire collection. You better. Oh, I'll, go, I'll go grab it. Go grab it. I want to see this because I came in at the end there. Oh, fuck. I'm, I've I'm seen a, them. Excited to see this. Oh I, oh, I know that picture from your parents' house. That's crazy. I recognize that. Wired for sound. That was there the whole fucking time I've known you. That's a solid 80s aesthetic. Like I know that picture from your parents' house. I recognize it yeah. vividly. I love it. I love that picture. That picture is my childhood. How many <laughs> how many are in the collection? I think six. Oh, you can do it. Gotta yeah, get those and some uh it's not gonna be hard. They're only like eighteen dollars on sculptures Amazon. and some uh pink neon pink and blue neon lights. But he, hear me out. Hear me. Rhode Island. Rhodes Island. Them talking about, I'm going back to this. <laughs> Forgot to talk about this. I want to talk about this earlier. Okay. I want to get into it more. Get into it. Let's do it. Talking about the living statues. How do they make the jump to robotics and <laughs> having any kind of robots at all? Like, wouldn't there not be like more dude, evidence that dude, there was fucking robots? That guy does that every single time. David like, Wilcox. Every single time. He's the guy who's like taken Corey Good and the boys and the secret space program and Mars regress like regression therapy like to age you back to when you like 20 years this guy has gone full board the whole Gaia platform is on board with Wilcox and Corey Good and the secret space program and Corey Good went to Mars was age regressed 20 years and then you ask Corey Good about it and he can't tell you anything except he did it and you're like well what same guy they it's wild the stuff that goes on. And Wilcox does that? Yeah. Well, he does that stuff? Well, man, yeah, Wilcox is I, deep. I know. And it, they always bring on ancient aliens to take the take. They, he's like the, <laughs> he's the, he's the last guy in, in the relay. And it's like, he just pushes that theory all the way to the end. Right. Yeah. It goes from like Childress to Sukulos. Then, uh, then Danikin, if they got him, and then it's and then it's fucking Wilcox <laughs> it goes, to take it all the way home. It goes He's like, like, yeah, it's go way out there. <laughs> it goes starting from like, it's possible that there we might not know quite enough about this ancient culture, and then Suklos goes, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens, and then you finally get to Wilcox, and he's like, it was the aliens. This 100%. is what they did. This, this is, is how what, they did it. This is what they did. This is how they did it, and this is why I know. Yeah. It makes hey, it makes for, it's it. good TV. He's, makes he's for good batting TV. cleanup on that team, just like <laughs> sucking that um, one home, man. Why don't we get into? Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Well, I'm just so we're we've confirmed that Cyberdyne systems has come from Greek, ancient Greece. Yes, yeah, the Terminator I, is uh, Greek. That's how okay. it starts. Cyberdyne is a Greek word. Well, didn't Arnold play Hercules? It's Greek for cog. Cogs. Yes, he did play Hercules in New York. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And he fought a bear. This is true. In real life. Probably. Probably. Why don't we uh, get into some space news? Space news. Um, not a lot of space news on the space news front. Um, one, because of all the coronavirus stuff going on. Two, because I completely forgot to get space news. <laughs> uh, but I, what Game I can clean. tell you for sure is that there is a n- low chance of auroras tonight. Or any night you're listening <laughs> to this episode. 
there's a low chance of where you are right now. So you're a small you're, chance of seeing auroras. If you're watching it live, there's a small chance. If you're watching it on Friday, you miss small it. chance. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever day you're listening to this. Hey, Braden, here's, now, a, here's a technical here's, question for you. Yeah. What's the lowest the Northern Lights will get latitude? What's the lowest ever recorded? Do you know? Um, no, but I imagine it's like getting into because I know it's seen in the northern states sometimes, so it's got to be. I just don't know how low. Like, how low do you go? Well, I'm just saying how that. Uh, can you go? Eighty percent of our listeners <laughs> never seen the Northern Lights. That's why I'm saying <laughs> when you listen to this, whatever day, whatever time, the chances are low of you seeing an aurora tonight. That's it, that is I think not that pretty fake covers, news. That's I think that's universal news. That's not fake at all. That's one he kept it broad, and yeah. he's not leading you on. You have a low, low chance to yeah. see an aurora tonight. And I'm not saying th- there's no chance. So if you're living in a northern community and you happen to be like, hey, I'm listening to this, and I'm looking at him right now, you're that small chance. You have just as good of a chance of seeing an aurora there as you do of having robots in ancient Greece. There's always a 50% chance of seeing auroras. Either you do or you don't. 50-50. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. What's the, what's the, so we got Aurora Borealis, and the southern one is the... Astralis or something. Astralis. Borealis okay. Aurora, because they're backwards. Yeah. <laughs> now, do like, if there was the biggest geomet- like geostorm ever, fucking plasma blast coming everywhere... Could the two be so big that the Earth is just completely encompassed with auroras? Like everywhere could see them? Like how far down do they go? Now you got me at curious. I don't, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think they would. I think if auroras got that bad, that it was that strong, I think that's the the one they're talking about that would fly our, fry our electrical grid. <laughs> if it was that mm-hmm. powerful. Lowest, I'm going to write that in right now. Lowest aurora. Ever recorded? Yeah. That's a good question. Exactly. I don't think it's lower than like 44 degrees north. I think it's 40. 40? 40? Are you guys ready? So. What do you got? 35 degrees north. That's the lowest ever? That's the lowest ever recorded. What's that? Is that like San Francisco? Or how low is that? How low is San Francisco? Um, let me look at their weird ass fucking map here. It's not that low. Probably not in California. Probably close. Get the, this you the said worst 35 picture. parallel north? North. Yeah. That's pretty low. That's like North it's Carolina, low. Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was, like it's got to be northern, northern California somewhere. Yeah. No, no it, it looks like, like Carolina. It's like, yeah, Miss, Southern it, like California. all of Oregon. Ish. I don't think it. I don't think it is the map I'm looking at it of the lowest ever recorded. Oh, no, no. 100%. You're right. I'm wrong. Yeah. It's like, it, yeah, it's a bit of Mexico might get it. Maybe, yeah, like maybe like the tiniest part of Mexico, like Tijuana, maybe. Oh, that's yeah. that's fucking low. Okay, most yeah. of the most of our listeners have a very, 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 very tiny chance of seeing an aurora in their lifetime. But you're saying there's a chance. There's always yeah, a chance, exactly. Andrew. You know, but luckily, there's a sudden polar shift or something, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, I uh, I fell short today. Forgot space. Like a polar knew- shift into a gigantic solar flare. <laughs> Both Dan and Zell brought uh, space news today. <laughs> I got some space news. Here, here's the great, here's the great headline. That's why I said Zell and Dan, because I knew. I didn't <laughs> How come nobody has asked me if I have space news? Because we've you asked didn't have before. None. We've asked before, and you go <laughs> space. Is that space? even real? is that even real, bro? Space isn't know. real. Oh, hey. Here's an update. You guys are all trying to hide God. That's all I know. Been hiding God since day one. This the whole podcast is about hiding God. If you if you couldn't tell, the only space Andrew cares about is the empty space between his ears. Oh, (laughs) this podcast is a goddamn prison. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you you couple it with. I got some other space news. Ninety nine point nine percent of you listening won't go to space. I'm going to go ahead and take that a couple decibels further. (laughs) That's still a lot of people, though, because we have like a lot of, we actually have a lot of listeners. Yeah, if you get. That's not a lot of people. 99.999% of people will never go to space. 
I mean, maybe. Yeah. So ninety nine point nine nine. I hope. Yeah. I hope we, we eat don't have these words as bad listening. as we eat those. Donald Trump will never be president words. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be see. Great. That's how you know we're not time travelers. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We can't predict we anything. Get shit wrong all the time. We weren't allowed to. We'd ruin the future. <laughs> yeah. All right. What I was got, your space news, though? The expectations of the gravitational wave research community have been fulfilled. So as a couple of years ago, we talked about for the first time ever, they detected gravitational waves colliding. Yeah. And now for the first time ever, they've detected two significantly different masses of black holes colliding, further strengthening the theory and gravitational waves of gravitational waves. And I guess they've, they're almost seeing uh, gravitational wave signatures almost every week now, but this is the first one that two like massively different sizes of black holes have. Does this mean together. we just live in the ocean of space? This is exactly. We're just a tiny little speck, man. We're at, in the, the fucking Earth, ocean. The Earth is just like an electron on the on the scale of the universe, yeah. really. You no. think there's some mini people on some like electron fucking at the bottom of the ocean who I, are like, <laughs> fucking we're we're fucking sensing waves. It's just people oh, jumping Atlanteans. It's just people jumping in the pool and shit, and they're sensing the waves, and they're thinking it's yeah, like a giant yeah, heavenly fucking, body. I feel the gravitational ray of a black hole hitting the water. Black Cannonball. Ho- That's Braden. <laughs> black hole's Braden. Huge rupture. Yeah, dude. I, I I don't. I'm not putting anything past anything anymore. I just feel like we're just all a little piece of something bigger and smaller, or bigger or smaller, depending which way you go. Yeah, infinitely. Infinite. Oh, th- and infinitely wide and tall for, and small. And you could never get to the bottom of it. You could think about it no matter. You could think about it as like God created the universe, but then who created God? You could think about it as a simulation universe, but who created the other simulators? Like, oh, now you're getting to some 420 discussion. Chicken or the Ooh. egg, man. <laughs> yeah. Chicken or the egg. Maybe in after hours, we'll smoke a couple more and then. Dude, the chicken came first. The egg came first, motherfucker. But who laid the egg? <laughs> the proto the fucking chicken. chicken did. The proto chicken wasn't exactly the chicken. The egg but was, it was placed like a... there by someone from the future. God. It's when reach you back, place the first egg. You'd know that. Actually, you know what? I know who did it. It was the fucking Easter Bunny. You know who did it? It was Adolf Hitler riding a Tyrannosaurus T Rex <laughs> with lasers on his fucking head. And put the egg Lasers. underneath the chicken with the help of the Easter Bunny, who is the actual Jesus, because he was at the Last Supper, and mm. it wasn't, it wasn't meme uh, of all time. Is it's got like fucking Jesus on the crucifix, and it's got some people coming up to him. They're like, Jesus, like you know, any last words? Like, what can we do to like help you? And you know, and then Jesus is like, I got one thing. They're like, what? Hide the eggs. <laughs> High kicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucking funny. Uh, um. All right. What was the space? Dan, did you have space news too? This yeah, has been I the best space news. news of all time. Great space. This news. was more, this was more funny than anything else. That uh, a, a company named Palantir, which is based out of Silicon Valley, has been awarded to provide the software and data services for the U.S. Space Force. Uh, in order to track objects that orbit uh, the Earth and also monitor space traffic, and the project, the contract uh, is for a pro- the the contract is for a project called the Kobayashi Maru. Koba, what? What? I, no, like you, you don't understand how fucking nerdy these fucking like this is beyond space nerds. <laughs> like this is like nerdiness beyond. It's a bunch of space nerds coming up with super nerdy stuff. Yeah, that Star Trek Palantir is from the Lord of the Rings. The Palantir where the I evil seeing cri- orbs. Yeah, the, okay. the evil seeing orbs and the Kobayashi Maru was the test that yeah was the test from Star Trek and uh, Starfleet Academy that Captain James T Kirk was the only person to ever defeat it. Dude, it. the chairman of that company, Plantier, Peter Thiel, he's a fucking weird dude. We could probably do a case file on all the weird <laughs> shit that guy's up to. It's nuts. Um, they didn't say how much the value of the contract was, uh, but I guess they had been working on this actually before uh, Palantir had been working on this type of uh, system before 
um, with JSOC, the Joint Space Operations Command Center. Uh, and just that it, it, I guess it, it fell through after a couple of years. Um, but now the Space Force has gone and pick, decided they're going to pick it up. And uh, that's how they're going to go forward. I fucking love it. Interesting. Cool. Weird company. Weird people. Palantir. Palantir. <laughs> uh, that's it for space news. Um, I don't think we have... Uh, I think the X2 is on the fritz again. It's dicked. Dicked? It's fucking dicked. I had it going today, but then it kind of it's, it's stalled halfway. Yeah, there's probably all that smoke in the studio. Dude, I, sm- yeah, I said smoke-free studio. Rips. Smoke-free. That's why I got to go... If, I, if it wasn't smoke-free, I'd be smoking right here, blowing in the camera. But I respect my equipment, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> How can, you're not gonna smoke on all the beer covered equipment <laughs> <laughs> beer doesn't get into the crevices like you only spill on the keyboard for the most part so it's fine you just throw the keyboard away after a bit you, you buy a used <laughs> one off the internet great. for five bucks you just keep throwing them out not throwing them out recycling for all you sticklers I've been recycling them to the electronic psych- recycling department um, Zell, if you want to queue up the new Patreons, I've got a couple new five star reviews I'm going to read. This is a five star review from Boy Get My Gun from Australia. Good times. Great podcast covers great points through thorough discussion and always very clever humor. Uh, please start to use the term mort. The Urban Dictionary has the meaning. Maybe start using the phrase blumpkin berries too. Good times, chairs. I think that's supposed to say cheers. What? Like, what's Mort on the Urban Dictionary? Pull that up, Zell. Do we dare? Okay, wait. Yeah, I'll pull. I'll pull it up. I don't, I'm. Gonna, I'm not going to look at it. I'm just going to pull it up. So it could be anything. Okay. So all right. What's it? What is it? Yeah. Mort. Mort on Urban Dictionary. Mort. Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Mort. All right. Oh, Mort, not Mork. That was Mork. Okay, I'm not going to look. I'm just going to pull it up. I'm not even going to look. I'm going to really read it together. Oh, it's so... I can't read can you it. even read that? It's so blurry. No, it's Mort, so blurry. Anything used to describe someone who lacks sense of life, looks dumbfounded, and has only a limited ability to learn and understand, often excluded from society. Oh, fuck. We're Morts. Yeah, it's all of us. <laughs> <laughs> we're all a bunch um, of Morts, Five star review from Stone and Steel. Walk in the line. Uh, I appreciate the viewpoints on everything these guys put together. It keeps me between believing everything and questioning everything. That's right down the middle. Right Where down. we strive for everything. Yes. Um, I can't read that one. Five star. <laughs> Why can't you read that one? Uh, it's too racial. I can't read. I can't. I'm not allowed to read the words. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to read it. I can't read it. It's fair. Don't worry. Five stars, though? Five stars. I can't, I can't read it. it. There you go. Sorry. Insert a different word that you that find a no, different word that you can not use. Not worth it. <laughs> Might no, slip I'm up. not doing it. Might slip I'm not up. doing it. Uh, five star review. The only place I get my news. <laughs> no, nope. terrible idea. Yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> not a good idea <laughs> not at good all. Idea. <laughs> Who's ever doing that and coming here and be like, "I'm listening to these guys," and then that's fact. Mm. Don't Mm-mm. look it up yourself. Don't do it. You we're, are getting. This is worse than third hand news. We're a bunch of morts. Us, <laughs> we're right? a bunch of listen. morts here. Yeah. Don't listen to the morts. <laughs> it's like this is like I heard from my sister. Uh, who knows a guy who knows a guy who has a dog who also the dog knows a guy um, who <laughs> hangs out with this other girl that uh, buys uh, meat from the deli from this other guy who t- said to her that they're aliens. Yeah, but Dan, all those people that you listed are far more credible than us. That's yeah. might be true. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> Buddy, you know, like Rick never takes advice from Jerry. And we're for Jerry's. <laughs> You just said we're all Jerry's. Yeah, all Mort's. All of us. Whoa, all Mort's. that's not cool. Buddy, you're the biggest Jerry. You'd be like you'd be like Pluto's <laughs> a planet in a heartbeat. Dude, one time Flex, you'd be flexing and shit up there. One time Rick took Larry. advice from uh from Jerry to go on the whirly durly. Listen, and then he almost got I'm himself not killed. saying I'm not saying we're wrong all the time. I'm definitely more of a sleepy Gary. Hey. <laughs> sleepy Gary. <laughs> 
or a scroopy noopers, but yeah. we are fifty percent right and fifty percent wrong. We're either right yeah. or we're wrong. Right down the middle, right, right down, down the, the center. Uh, so you got to, who's our new patrons? We've thanks to everyone supporting the show. If you want to get on? We got tons of other material. Uh, we just released our live pay per view uh, watch along of the Cryptid Crushathon was, that happened last weekend. Oh, what? Oh my God! Was amazing it amazing fight, dude? Unbelievable. Fun if you time. want to listen to our live watch along, go to patreon.com slash alien theorists. Um, as little as five dollars gets you all access to everything we do. Um, and head to our merch store, alien theorist theorizing dot live. We got shirts, we got hats, and I promise you, sometime in the next 30 days, we're gonna have some new <laughs> wicked merch up for the summer season. Uh, I'm working on it, it's tough, but within the next 30 days, maybe for May 1st, we will see. Spend those uh, government checks. Yeah, spend those. <laughs> don't. Hey, why why stimulate your businesses around your community when you can stimulate us? Send us those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, send us those. Uh, you know, hard end dollars. Support the show. Uh, thanks, everyone. We love the support. It keeps the show going. And as you can see, if you've been following us from the start, the bigger we get, the better the improvements. Uh, that we put into the show. So, you know, we're doing the live streams now and stuff, and that's all thanks to you guys. We can't thank you enough. Okay. So, so who are their new Patreoners? Let's give a quick disclaimer here. There's more than we normally read because last week we tried to record this very same case file and we completely butchered it. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be... That's being generous. That's being generous. <laughs> we, You know, the quarantine was rough on us last week. It was Easter weekend and Monday came. It was a compounded hangover, so you had to, in order to get over the hangover, you had to get a little more drunk. And then by the time 7.30 rolled around, nothing <laughs> nothing went at all. All right, so I'll make up, make up some names. Let's hear it. All right, Hugo, Russian, Brody, Allen, Otway, Tasman, Kui, or Kui, Joseph Branston. I'm pretty sure he's watching the live stream. Cheers, J- Joseph. Colton, Wesley Fincher, Jenna. These are all pretty standard names this week. Very surprised. Robert Bates, Devin, Christopher. It's because you got cocky. I got called cocky. you out on your weird names. Yeah, I did. No, Christopher <laughs> Buck Sleazy the Fourth. <laughs> all right, that's pretty fucking dope. That's a fucking cool name. Ryan. Pretty sure that guy's a uh, Master Side Nine or whatever. That's, that a, streamer. that's a pretty dumb name. He has a stupid fucking name. Ryan. Yeah, that's a terrible yeah. name. Stupid name. I do not approve of my own name. Mindy C. Streis. Magnus Hara. Effie F. My favorite so far. Jessica Rios. Papa Falapa. <laughs> new, new favorite. Boy, new Papa, favorite today, Papa Falapa. Papa Falapa, Papa Flapa. Papa Falapa, Flapa Papa. Okay. Jen Geiger, Nick, Sean Spencer. What? When was the last time we recorded? Sixth. A couple more. Anthony McKenna, Isabella, Matt Smith, Dennis. Super Sane. Nice. Just Dennis Sane, or Sane's. But I added super, and oh. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You and know what? what? If any any yeah, other theory right out there. I want to know if there's any other Craigs out there that have the same issue as me. What do you mean? With yeah. their name. Elaborate. Just people not like not hearing their name. I've never thought to ask other people with the same name. Uh, maybe. I don't know. That don't know your name or don't know how to spell your name because that's like they 100% They can't say like when people. you say your name to someone else, they just go and just say a diff- completely different name. It's just because you got such a forgettable face. <laughs> is that what it is? Probably. Yeah. Um, I'm always I, looking at the ground like away when I'm talking. Please don't call me Craig. Please don't call me Craig. Please don't call me Craig. <laughs> I just hey, uh, be- anything else before we wrap this up? A couple things. W- one thing, I just wanted to give a quick personal thank you to all the Patreons supporting because this is technically now during the COVID my full time gig. So I'm going to be striving to bring out even more content than we normally would while we wait for the whole madness to work itself out. And Zell's Band of the Week is a local band from Kelowna, BC called Ancient Engines. The song's called Gordy Brook. 
it Speak has a, it's an awesome music video to go with it. So you can find them on Spotify. Ancient what's, Engines. What's their name again? Ancient Engines. Fucking, they should just call themselves the fucking Antikythera mechanism. They should. I'll put. I'll pass. Same. Me, same. I'll, I'll pass yeah. a word on to them. Anyways, Ancient Engines. All song right, called Gordy Brook. Thanks, everyone. We love you guys. Uh, and we'll see you next week. And as we always say, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace. From a bag and shake it all We can drip it from a bag and shake it all From a bag and shake it all. We can drip it from a bag and shake it all.